Hey there, this is John Poltrock with the Poltrock Team, your number one real estate team. And I am here with Mr. David Cowan. He is one of our local attorneys. I think you probably do more real estate closings than anybody in Cherokee County. Is that a fair statement? We do all we can, we try hard. He's a great guy and honestly, I felt like he was probably one of the best suited people to talk about today's topic. The number one issue we're seeing right now is this lawsuit that National Association of Realtors has been entwined in, and it's been a big deal. I probably see it more than most of you because my news feed is very real estate related, but it's one thing that's causing a lot of miscommunication and misinformation out there. I'm sure everybody's seen the headlines of all these things. Home prices are going down. The air of 6% commission is gone. Like all these things that is just kind of misinformation out there. So we wanted to shed some light today on what real world situations are and what we're kind of expecting and looking forward to. So David is born and raised right here in Murphy, graduate of Campbell Law. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on, I really appreciate it. So there's three core topics that I really wanted to tackle today. The number one, the big one, everybody always concerned about money. I mean, when you do a settlement statement, probably that's the number one thing they talk about, right? Certainly, absolutely. And this air of 6% commissions is dead. When you read the news, it makes it sound like there was this price fixing in place that 6% is the standard commission across the entire United States and National Association of Realtors told us it must be that. That never happened, ever, at least not here. I mean. You see hundreds and hundreds of closings. What, what do you see in commissions? Really, commissions are all over the place. We've had transactions in which commissions were significantly higher than 6% and, and a few for a special reason that might be less than 6%. Commissions have always been completely negotiable and I don't think that this litigation will have any bearing on what commissions will be going forward in total. I mean, it's, it ultimately boils down to a professional service. In a lot of regards, you get what you pay for. Those that do more typically charge more. Those that do less typically charge less. And every situation is completely different. I mean, I know we've ended up in situations where we charge less because we literally were handed the buyer and they just wanted us to manage the closing. And I've had situations where I practically rebuilt the house before it went on the market. And of course we charge more for those scenarios. So to say that things are universal, I think is a very giant misnomer and completely misleading the public on how things actually work. So just like always, I think that's not gonna change. It's gonna to continue to be negotiable and it's gonna depend on the level of service that you want, need, and prefer. Do you disagree? Absolutely, I think that's a fair statement. Perfect. And from your lens, David, you know you see these commission dollars when, on everybody's settlement statement. What do people get whenever they hire a realtor? What should they expect from their agents? Sure, um, I've seen in the 22 years that I've been at this, some closings are becoming increasingly difficult. There are issues that crop up that are, are tough, um, I think it is exponentially important to hire a good realtor to help you on, if you're a buyer or a seller, it's important to have a good realtor. We do handle closings involving realtors and some that do not involve realtors. And I can say with absolute certainty, the closings that involve realtors are much smoother. They're more likely to close on time. Um, there are not as many issues that crop up because realtors are able to guide the buyers and the sellers through the closing process. So I think it is very important to hire a good realtor and the closings that involve realtors are so much smoother than closings that don't involve realtors. Absolutely. I know how much time and energy we put into making sure closings are smooth. We've got our closing coordinator to help make that process as streamlined as you can. Because it's real estate. Nothing's ever easy in real estate, sure. right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, the second thing that I think we should really cover is this giant thing about housing prices are getting ready to go down. I think it even stemmed all the way to the very top of our leadership in politics. And there was this thing that prices are gonna go down. What's your take on that? I just don't see it that way. Um, in the years I've done real estate, it seems like to me that there is a shortage of housing here for people that want and need to be here for many, many different reasons. Um, closing prices or house prices are based completely on supply and demand. I don't think that the commission structure or how commissions are calculated would have any bearing on house prices going up or going down. Um, there are a lot more people that want to be here than there are places for them. Um, just simply based on supply and demand, I think that we'll continue to have a housing shortage for the foreseeable future. So this particular litigation and commission, I don't think will have any bearing on house prices going up or going down. And I think they're, they're really confusing, especially first time home buyers. 
thinking that if they wait a few months, prices are gonna go down, and I just don't see that. I mean, we have less than 200 houses on the market right now in a market that anywhere from 40 to 70 houses are selling a month. I mean, there's just not enough supply out there. Very true. And at the end of the day, it's what a buyer's willing to pay for it. I mean, that's, exactly right. that's, that's the market and that's how that works. So if you're sitting on the fence waiting for prices to come down, I would not do that based on this. I think they're gonna be completely unrelated topics and issues altogether. Now, the other question that I think everybody's asking is that, okay, so if these two big things aren't as big of a thing, what's actually gonna happen as a result of this lawsuit? And I know you took the time to go through it this weekend and deep dive into it a little more and try to figure things out. What's your take on this? What do you actually expect is gonna come into play? Sometimes change in industry takes a long time um, to get from point A to point B to where we're actually fully implementing what has happened. Um, in my personal opinion, maybe the only change that we'll see in the future, and, and it may be a while before this happens. Um, number one, I think the commissions will continue to be completely negotiable. That's not gonna change. But what we may see in the future, and I don't know if this is a month away, six months away, a year away, five years away, we may at some point see closing statements that have commission on the seller side for what the listing agent gets, then also commissions being paid by the buyer on the buyer's closing statement based on what their particular realtor has, has charged them. So that would be something that is different than now, but beyond that and the commission being split up on the closing statements and who's paying that, um, I don't really see a whole lot of change based on litigation coming. And a lot of the notes that I'm seeing, the only thing that's gonna affect us is on the MLS, we offer compensation to the buyer's agent, whomever that might be. And according to NAR, that field is gonna go away, which is gonna create a lot of confusion, I think, in, in the short term. They're saying that this is supposed to be done by July, but I just don't see these mass changes they're discussing happening that quick. I mean, you're talking about a hundred year old entity changing in just a matter of a month or two. And I just think it's gonna take longer than that and probably get postponed, which is pretty common in law too, right? Like that sure. happens a lot. Uh, whatever the regulations are and, and the rules, we will absolutely follow them. Um, I don't know how quickly change will come, but as far as house prices and, and commission percentages, I don't know that we'll see a lot of change in either one of those areas, but we certainly will follow the regulations, whatever they are. Absolutely. So we're going to be seeing what happens over the coming months. And a lot of confusion is still going to be here until these things really get ironed out and they figure out what to expect. So we'll keep you posted as things progress. The biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that scares me in all of this is that a lot of the big franchises and a lot of the other companies are not requiring National Association of Realtors membership as a result of this lawsuit. And that scares me a ton. And the reason that does is that NAR was the first professional organization that I'm aware of that ever had a code of ethics or a standard of practice. There are systems and processes in for agents that misbehave and do things wrong, both with other professionals and with consumers. And if they're not a member of NAR, it's like the wild, wild west. They have no one to hold them accountable. So as you go through this, please be cautious. Make sure that you, one, hire a great real estate agent that has excellent reviews on Google. They have a great online presence that they, you know, you hear about them, recommended, referred, all those things. Make sure you get that. And number two, make sure that they are, in fact, a realtor, not just a real estate agent. Because those folks that are realtors are subject to those standards of practice and ethics and all those things that come into play. And if something does go sideways, you have protection in place to make sure that you're covered. Dave, is there anything else we should add to this? I think that's got it. That's a good explanation. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> I appreciate you joining us. If you have any questions for us, don't ever hesitate to give us a call. 1-866-MURPHY-NC. If you need a great real estate attorney here in Murphy, North Carolina, give him a call. And I'll put your number in the script just below right here. That's got it. Thank we appreciate you, so you. Thank you. Take care.